University, which is an incredible resource for all you alumni and JA staff members out there. So be sure uh, to stay with us today and welcome Dave on stage right now. Hi, Dave. Welcome back. Hi. Oh, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm so excited for Thursdays. You know, things are growing nice on the camera <laughs> for all the J alumni out there. So guys, as I said, this is David Meltzer. He is most probably the biggest JA fan, the biggest JA supporter, and our biggest JA ambassador. And we're so grateful for having you. And for everybody who doesn't know you, please introduce yourself. Oh, sure. I uh, am the Chief Chancellor of Junior Achievement University, an alumni of Junior Achievement myself. I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people to be happy. I utilize all the different businesses I have, my books, my speaking, my coaching, my TV shows like Two Minute Drill, uh, my podcast, The Playbook, all to help empower others, to empower others to be happy, to make more money, help more people, and have more fun. And I can't think of a better organization than Junior Achievement to help us all empower others to do that. Thank you so much for joining us. And guys, David's schedule is so busy and we're so grateful to have you every Thursday here to share your incredible thoughts, to share your knowledge and everything you learned also within JA. And for everybody who doesn't know who JA is and you just joined randomly on Instagram, JA is a global NGO and we are in more than 110 countries across the world. And what we do is we equip kids and children across the world with entrepreneurship and with work readiness. So what that means is our flagship program is actually the company program where I took part in myself back 10 years ago in Germany and where I created my own startup. So we created a product and we actually had to market the product and then also generate revenue with the product. And it's like a full circle of entrepreneurs and we're so incredible grateful that we are part of the two minute drill show Dave because this is where also a lot of entrepreneurs are do you want to explain what the two minute drill show is all about and also share that the alumni community can be part of the second season yes we'd love to so two minute drill is a hit series on bloomberg television and amazon prime video worldwide and we give fifty thousand dollars of cash and prizes and a Junior Achievement Impact Award winner every single episode. And we are getting people to try out now. We'll be filming in the late March. Uh, so please go to dmeltzer.com forward slash pitch or reach out to Junior Achievement or reach out to me personally at david at dmeltzer.com. But it is a hit new show, $50,000 of cash and prizes, and you can win the Junior Achievement Impact Award as Sally Ann Reese has today with play on we'll get to meet her and she can share her experience on the show so please try out we are trying to encourage the entrepreneurs of the world the young entrepreneurs we will save the world trust me our solutions and innovations have and will save the world that is so true and guys um go to david's website apply for the second season if you want to know more about the all the j impact award winners from this season you can go to the link in our bio there we linked all of them all our live sessions and also where you can obviously apply and where you can find David. So for the past weeks, we did this all the time, David, I have one question for you from the alumni community. So last week you shared your favorite books and we got the question over and over and over. Why did you start a podcast and what is your podcast all about? Sure. So I started a podcast called the playbook. Napoleon Hill's think and grow rich is my favorite book. I, because I ran the most notable sports agency in the world and had a huge marketing and media company within sports, entertainment, billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, I wanted to do a modern day Napoleon Hill and extract the playbook of success from all the greatest minds, athletes, entertainers, celebrities, millionaires, billionaires, and entrepreneurs. And so I started my podcast to share the playbook to success because look, the easiest way to get to where you wanna go is to find someone that's already there and ask them for directions. So I'm trying to create a repository of all of those directions, just like Napoleon Hill did in his book, Think and Grow Rich. That is awesome. And honestly, I've been a gymnast as a kid and I feel like the entrepreneurship world and the sports world, they're so like-minded because they always want to be the best. They want to get that medal or they want to you know, get that investment or like change the world. So I love that you combine both with entrepreneurship and sports. 
And so, David, as usual on Thursdays, I have to kick you out of the call because we have our J Impact Award winner waiting in here. Is there any last words you want to share with the alumni community for this week? Otherwise, we see you for sure next week, Thursday. Real quick, have the desire to be what you must be. That's the commonality between inner entrepreneurs and athletes like yourself and me, myself. Be kind to your future self. Do good deeds. Try out for two-minute drill. Check out Sally Ann Reese. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much, David. See you next week. All right, everyone. This was David Meltzer. So excited to have him on the show every single week. I'm going to add Sally, our winner to our live session. There we go. And before we do that, please check out our link in bio. You can apply for the next season of the two minute drill. You will find all the information about JA. Oh, there she is already. Hi, Sally. Welcome to the show. Uh, good to see you. Thank good you. Good to see you too. Just before you joined, for everybody who's watching, um, go to the link in our bio where you can not only find information about the two minute drill, but also how you can join our global alumni community where all of the incredible J Impact Award winners will be and so many more business owners and like-minded people around the world you can connect with and all you can find all the entrepreneurs up there. So, but now I'm so excited to introduce you to Sally, who is our next J A Impact Award winner of the Two Minute Drill Show. And Sally, I think you can introduce yourself so much better than I could ever do. So please go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I think um, a lot of people know me. I'm a dual citizen. I was raised in British Columbia, Canada. Um, I graduated from a normal high school. Um, you know, I was a multi-sport athlete, but I was also very into math and history. And I went on and did my Bachelor of Arts in Economics and Political Science at the University of Victoria. And then um, what you can sort of see is for the past 25 years, I've resided here in Silicon Valley, uh, where I've been on the founding team of five successful startups and three nonprofits. Um, I've always taken a key role in operation finance and uh, project management. Uh, so, well, let's see, well, I started my entrepreneurship probably when I was 16 and I hired my sister to help me clean pools, but my professional career really started at TiVo. Uh, that we were pioneering this digital video recorder concept and uh, I was on the founding team of that with Mike Ramsey and Jim Barton. And uh, that company went public in 1999. And then actually in 1916, it was acquired by Roby for $1.1 billion. Wow. Yeah, but so since then, um, that was really my getting my feet wet in the real life world. But I've been on the founding team of four others, like I said, and three nonprofits. Um, but play on. When I started play on, it was actually because my daughter's was playing basketball. I have three kids. Now they're all grown. But um, my daughter was playing basketball at a local club in Palo Alto. And the head coach had asked me if I could help out with some of the back office stuff. And um, he was a great basketball coach. But yeah. the club was super disorganized. Um, registrations, all the scheduling, everything was like run on paper. Oh, well, there was one spreadsheet. But it was for the most <laughs> part, paper and and when I was in charge of all of those things I was spending hours going through emails like just trying to keep the program together keep everybody communicating and and I just thought there's got to be a better way and, and at that time when I went out and searched for everything there were like team oriented softwares or there was like these web page makers that was super expensive but really and truly there was nothing and I thought look I'm not alone mm -hmm. right there oh, are the yeah. millions of people around me like the so well, wait a second, why not build something? And that was when my startup experience sort of kicked in. And I said, this is an unmet need. And I have the skill set to address it. Um, I realized that the real problem was for the person who's organizing sports. Like, that's where it starts. Because they're like, okay, I need to get everybody registered and paid. And then I need to put them on certain rosters. And then I've got to communicate with them and all those sort of things. And we said, Okay, now second thing is it has to be easy to use because coaches and those organizers, they're busy. Most of them are volunteers. So it has to be easy to use and it has to be affordable. So we made it really affordable. We made it free to wow. use. And so we created a platform today that is live and you can go on there and it's an instant solution for rosters and registrations and communications and schedule, all those things. And again, we offer it for free. And today... We've got people all over the world using it. Wow. And 
They use it for activities like standard sports, like basketball, soccer, baseball, cricket, football, cheer. But then we also have them using it for things which you wouldn't guess, like chess clubs, book clubs, robotics, after school programs. Play on also really addresses the needs of the athlete because I'm an athlete, right? Like I still play tennis and basketball and uh, <laughs> soccer when I can, not during COVID, but, um, and so we created a, a dashboard for that participant so that they could have their showcase and their profile and a way of staying connected to all the different sports that they play. And um, well, that's what we do. And that's who I am. <laughs> and Sarah, I bet you're a gymnast. You could probably yes. have used this growing up, correct? Totally. So I just wanted to, um, I love that today's theme is sports and entrepreneurship combined, because these are my two favorite worlds of all time. To bring them together, there's so Thank much you. power around this. And Me. thank you, first of all, for sharing this. This is so inspiring. This is what I love about entrepreneurship and people with an entrepreneurial mind. It's like, okay, here's a problem. Let me fix it rather than complaining 25 years about the same problem and not doing anything about it. So thank you so much. This is so inspiring. And I'm sure our alumni entrepreneurs who watch us, you're like, oh yeah, I had the same thought when I said, this is the problem I want to solve. And yeah, totally to your point, I was a gymnast when I grew up and it was all over the place, honestly, like communicating with the parents because you're too young and then the coaches don't have time because they do coaching in the free time because I wasn't in the national team, right? So my coaches were all volunteers and they had their own life and then they were like competitions and whatnot. So it was like this overall mess and nobody knew where to go, who to call, <laughs> like when do we start this yeah. competition and whatever. So I think it's so, so, so needed. And I'm especially excited that it's free, right? Because usually yeah. if you have a platform, there's always a cost and most of the clubs around the world they don't have any extra no. money. I mean, they can't no. even pay their coaches properly, right? Let alone right. Um, affording a fee. So how did you manage to have it actually as a free um, service for the clubs so, out there? So, you know, so again, one of the things is know your customer, right? This is business 101. Know your customer. And what we said is kind of like what you just said. These people are volunteers typically that are organizing or it's a side. Yeah. They don't have a lot of margin to be able to be putting out, thousands, or, you know, even even $10, it's a lot of money. Um, and what we said is, look, our vision, which is different than our mission, but our vision is about supporting and encouraging lifetime participation in sports. Wow. Not just for youth, not, you know, not just for a select few, but for everybody. How do we encourage and support that over a lifetime? And how do we do that in a way that everybody can afford it? And what we said was, well, great. So we won't charge people unless they're making money. So we become a transaction problem. So if you're running a, 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 let's just say you're running a league or a tournament and you're like, okay, it's a hundred dollars for everybody to, to participate. Well, then we charge a transaction fee, but only if you use cards. And again, we give people all the options of using that platform for free, but if they want to run it as sort of a mini business, we yeah. work with them to be able to uh, get a transaction fee. Yeah, I don't think that seems totally fair, right? It's like... And, and it's about, um, in Business 101, right? It's about knowing the diff your, what is your business model? How, what is it that you bring value? And the value that PlayOn brings is that we facilitate communications and we facilitate transactions. We don't charge for facilitating communications. That should be free, yeah. right? But we do charge for facilitating transactions, but only if you use a credit card. That's amazing. I mean, I'm like, where can I get this? I'm like, I'm not it's active free. in the sports club right now, but like whenever I'm back, I'm like, hold on, let me call Sally. <laughs> I really need to make sure that the club has it. Um, so you were also part of the two minute drill show where you won the JD Impact Award. Congratulations yeah. again. Cool. And since our alumni and the viewers, you guys, you can participate in the second season. So what you have to do is go in our link in bio. You can find all the information on how to apply, when the filming will be, whatnot. All the information are in the link in bio here. But what we, what we want to hear from you, Sally, is we want to get like the peek behind the curtain on like, how was it? You know, first question. How did you even end up being on that show? <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? So um, I have immense respect for David. He is, he knows what he's talking about. And so he's not, he, when he speaks, I listen. Yeah. 
And, um, and this is also something else David Meltzer and I really fully agree on. When you have a product or a vision or a mission or any of those things, you need to spend 80% of your time getting other people interested in you or your product, right? Yeah. So that means when I applied to be part of the two minute pitch, I wasn't really going after the goal of winning. I was going after the journey, which means I needed to prepare exactly a two minute pitch that would stimulate people's interest mm -hmm. in who I am and maybe what more not not as important but who play on in in what mm -hmm. we're doing and um, again when you think about the hundreds and thousands of organizers just like me who have the same problem I want to stimulate their interest in play on and that's why I did the two minute pitch and David's team was top-notch professional they were first class all the way. Um, David does something called Road to Revenue alongside of his two minute mm -hmm. pitch. And that two minute pitch was a way of me practicing getting people interested in you. I really am. Yeah, so and when you've been on the show, I mean, it was not like, it is kind of a TV show, but not because it's like a hybrid no. format because you're on screen, right? But they are yeah. in a studio. So how did it feel? Have you been on TV or any kind of shows before? Or was this your no. first time? That was my first time. It was very nerve wracking. But again, preparation is everything, right? So what's the famous saying? Planning is everything, but a plan is worthless. In other words, planning helps you be calm, but you've got to be in the moment. So a plan is yeah. kind of useless. But um, I did spend an enormous amount of time preparing that two minute pitch, which by the way, that, that preparation now set me for a good two years of business because I know exactly what I'm saying to people. Um, and when I think of being on TV, um, you know, I was like, oh, is my hair right and everything else like that. <laughs> but when I got on there, what I realized was I was just trying to connect with people's energies and interests. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing about sales, connecting with people and their problem, your solution. That's so inspiring, honestly, that, you know, it's only two minutes, but it's so important like you have to know your pitch like what are you talking about because like, i feel sometimes even with like not only if you create your own business but if you have a project it's in your head but there's so many things in your head and it's so hard to communicate on the spot it like, is. Yeah, i want to do this yeah but actually i want to do x y and z too and this as well and like, you know you kind of ramble around um, yeah. but with so many things because if like most of our viewers are ja alums so they have like a million ideas in their head because they've went they've been through this whole experience of creating a startup and if you have this entrepreneurial mindset you're constantly on the go and trying to find oh i could do this and that but i think focus is something which is so important especially in entrepreneurship even though i feel like a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with like finding the focus you know and not like trying 25 other projects at the same time exactly so um, thank you for sharing the peek behind the curtain on the show. And what mm -hmm. we would love for you to know is, so you updated us on the current status on like you're already in so many countries, but what is your future plan with Play On and maybe even beyond Play On? Like what are your future plans? <clears throat> well, um, so we, we really abide by in our company the objectives with key results, right? So this is the OKR strategy of business, um, which I know that you guys probably teach some form of it. And um, we are focusing on three things. Number one is we're, we're growing that community of people that use Play On. We are putting a lot of effort in reaching organizers to let them know that this solution exists for them. This suite of solution exists for them. They can go on instant turnkey free to use. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of what we're doing, just growing the user base through knowledge. Um, it's also, by the way, uh, that's number one. Number two, I always have to think about these in bullet points. Number two is we're growing the product. So we're always thinking about how do we create a better play on? This is software, right? Software and actually any business, it's never done. It's totally. always iterating, getting better and better and better. For example, we have a product coming out. We just launched gear by play on, which is a way of setting up an instant spirit gear store through play on. Um, we also are about to launch Train by Play On, which is a way of doing virtual coaching through a virtual learning platform. Mm -hmm. 
We're really excited about that one. And that one will be coming out in March. Um, by the way, if you, uh, this is my ask to you in your community is follow us on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram um, alongside JA Worldwide. You can even go to our blog um, on Play On because that's where we release all of our stories through edutainment. Um, and by the way, the third one is, is that we're starting to grow our productive partnerships. So we are working with uh, companies that have products and services and they want to be able to offer those to our community. So those are the three areas. That, I mean, that sounds like a lot, but it sounds like, you know, the, there's so many clubs out there who need this and to find all of them, I guess, is the tricky part because so many of them are like hidden, right? They're not they are. outward They're going and these They're are the who need it the most, right? So guys, if you watch us, um, also we will link all your information like the website, social media channels on our website. So make sure to go yeah. to the link in bio. You can find everything there. And if you are in a sports club or you know anyone who is in a sports club and you're like, oh, I totally think they need it, just go ahead. And I'm sure Sally is more than happy um, to get all your feedback that you can connect right. with her and really make this a even more global thing, right? To reach every single sports club around the world. All right, so, and we want to end. Um, so what we usually do on our Thursday live is because you are such a successful and great entrepreneur and so many of our viewers are just starting out. So what are your top, what is your top one or top three tips on how to start a business? Um, to start a business, it's really important that you think through, <laughs> it's so, it seems so simple, but uh, who are your customers? What are your products? And by the way, you yourself are a startup, right? So I always say to people is that you have to start with you. What are you? And it has to be authentic because people can see right through when you're trying to build it up when it's not real. Yeah. Who are you? What are you passionate about? What are you good at? I have people that come to me all the time and they're like, I've got this great idea for this company, for this product. I go, great. How are you going to influence that? What are you good at? And then when you're not good at something, it's okay if you're not good at something. If you're not good at something and that's a critical part of your business, find partners. Find people that are willing to push that cart up the hill with you every day. And so your team becomes really important to you. That is an amazing tip. And I think everybody, I feel like the personal brand is usually seen as like, you're building up your personal brand on social media and being an influencer. But I think what a lot of people forget is like, it's who you are all day long. And as much as you need a pitch for your business, I feel like you also need a personal pitch. If you're at networking, if you meet someone, like who, who are you? I mean, you can tell like from where you were born or like what business you do, but I feel like it's so important to have this pitch in your head on like, who are you? Because the people do not know you and they can't read your yeah. mind, obviously. Right. It's very true. And you know, um, in Canada, when I grew up, people used to always ask you, oh, where are you from? That's important, mm -hmm. to Canada, right? Because Canada is a small country. So we usually know within six people, you're somehow connected. Right? So it's very true. Like you'd be like, oh, where are you from? Vernon. Oh, oh, my aunt is you're like, yeah. I know her. the cousin of so, the friend is, yeah. <laughs> um, in Silicon Valley, and especially down here, people want to know what you do. Mm -hmm. And not just what you do for business, but what do you do in your passion? And so for me, you know, it depends on who I'm talking to. I often will talk about my business, but I also very much talk about my tennis or my basketball mm -hmm. or my horseback riding or my scuba diving because that's fun, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my, there's work and then there's fun. Yeah. Totally. I mean, these are such amazing tips. Thank you so much for inspiring me and our viewers, we will save this, guys. You can watch this afterwards if you couldn't make it because of time zones or other commitments. So thank you so much again, Sally, for being on the show. Congratulations on winning the J. Impact thank you Award. so much. And I oh, hope timing. we will. <laughs> That's fine. And I hope we will see and talk to each other anytime soon. And now go on with your life. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank Take you so care. much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.